I want every Ryder Cup to be the most technologically advanced in the sport industry. But I also want those fans to leave and think that was the best day of sport I've ever experienced. A lasting memory. Hello, I'm Sarah Sturk. Today I'm joined by Pascal Briet and Michael Cole to discuss how the Ryder Cup and Cap Gemini are working together to bring data and insights to golf fans like never before. How exciting is this time with, with the boom in AI and the advancements in technology as sports fans? Golf is complicated by its nature. You don't have two teams, you've got 156 players for a regular golf tournament, but even the Ryder Cup and the match play format means it has a degree of complexity. What AI can deliver is to untangle that, to, to simplify the, the sport for perhaps the more general sports fan. The outcome IQ powered by Cap Gemini. The probability is that Hovland and Aberg will go on to win their match, a 76% chance of doing so. I would say that probably the majority of fans that come to the Ryder Cup actually are fanatical about sport. They're not necessarily fanatical about golf. So technology can give them a helping hand. And that's what we set out to achieve with Outcome IQ. It's simplifying the complexity of golf. The level of data is intimidating for almost everybody. When you look, I mean, around the world, all clients are really struggling with data, which is on not only the volume, but also the quality of data, where they are stored, how old they are, uh, whether they, they, can, they are reliable or not. In terms of getting that compromise between the amount of data and, and retaining the experience for the fan, it's really important that we think about how we're going to surface the data. Keeping people in the moment of sport, when you achieve that, that's when you know you've got the compromise just right. The big problem is uh, when you start doing something, first it's the first time you do it. So you don't know what you need and you don't know what you're going to get. Uh, and you don't even know what you have. So the first things we did was to try to collect every data we had. But the complexity is not really in the volume of data. We've been studying something like 350,000 strokes. So you might say, wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, we've been also looking at data for the players and we've been uh, taking all data from all players for the last 50 to 70 last tournaments. Now the question is much more, how do you make that data relevant and how do you build probabilities uh, from that? Uh, from that amount of data, what you have to know is that for each game, we generate something like 170 million possibilities of what could happen. The data, whilst it's critical, isn't the end goal because it's about turning that data into, into insight and insight into intelligence. One of the key enhancements through the AI version of Outcome IQ is the sheer number of data sources. It's those determinants that, that can change, not just from morning session to afternoon session, but literally between the players, between the shots. Weather is, is a key element to this. We have weather sensors out on the, on the holes. They're recording something like 15 measurements of, of weather information. Moisture in the air, wind speed, wind direction, the threat of lightning every three seconds, pumping data into the algorithms to make sure that actually the, the insights and intelligence is based upon all these variables. With Ryder Cup, we know the teams about four weeks in advance only. We know the pairing the day before, and we cannot guess on how each shot will be done. So we have about two seconds after the ball stops rolling, really to make all the calculation and all the probabilities. So those different elements of complexity is adding on top of just the data element. And you mentioned the broadcasters and the fans, you know, you look at something like 58% now, a number that's sort of banded around, say they would like to play through those what-if scenarios with a, with a match or a game. When something like this has never existed before, how big were the challenges for you to make this happen in the world of golf at the Ryder Cup? It always starts with, I mean, a dream or an idea, like, let's make it. 
If I can take an example outside of golf, for example, when we worked uh, with Grant Dalton for the America's Cup uh, two years ago, he had a dream. He said, I would like my fans to understand what's going on and I would like to make the win visible. Now that's how we started. How do you make the win visible by using data and things like that? That's exactly the same with Ryder Cup. We have some dreams on how can we make a better experience for fans and how do we build all of this. It is about the, the fun experience, but it's also about capturing drama. Yeah. What Outcome IQ really helps us to deliver is compelling drama that puts into context the, the consequence of this shot. And the Outcome IQ to win the match, powered by Cap Gemini, Holland and Hatton with the advantage. Just over 50% chance from this point in this situation with the score as it is of going on to win. Let's take a couple of years ago, 2023. What were the big challenges to get this system right before the last edition of the Ryder Cup? Sports doesn't give you a second chance to some extent for, for technology. I mean, this is the day. Yeah. <laughs> you nail it or you fail yeah. miserably yeah. in front of millions <laughs> of people. I guess there's a, an understanding in, in sport that actually it's only the, the athletes or the golfers that need to be fully trained up and, and ready to perform on the day that it really matters. In our world, it's the technology, it's the processes, it's the operations, and, and it's the people. We train ourselves for weeks out or even months out so that we have match day readiness. And I think that's an element that people don't necessarily see, but we feel it. Well, isn't it a two-year process from 23 to 25, isn't it? Hey, 23 edition finishes, what's next? Doesn't it start pretty much from day one with a two-year build-up? Yeah, yeah. And in fact, the big difference between 23 and 25, if we may say so, was really the input of AI and Gen AI, which is adding a lot uh, to the outcome of a Q system. We had a, a probability system to some extent. Now we have, uh, we have a system which is both probability and insights. So we're doing, we can do much more than we could do before. What's most important is, for example, those insights is making a decision on which ones are really relevant and should be broadcasted. Mm -hmm. And that's where, to some extent, technology stops. And we have a human yes. oversight, to yes. some extent, yeah. as a final decision maker into what we should be broadcasting. But when we think about match time itself, we also have what we call the guardrails. Yeah. So for every insight that comes out, it has to go through a degree of validation check-in whether it's about data integrity, whether it's about deterministic, whether it's about profanity check-in, there are these checks that are fully automated. And if the algorithms fail just one, then that insight doesn't get recreated. It goes back through the full cycle. What was the response from the broadcaster side of things to Outcome IQ? The biggest testimony that I could see in terms of the favourable uptake from the broadcasters was they exceeded the contractual obligation mm. to show the, the probability data for Outcome IQ on the screens. They felt that it was giving them a new narrative and new insight that they didn't have access to before. And I think speed is also critical as yeah. well. The human, unfortunately, is the vulnerability in getting data and insight and intelligence from, from A to B, the more that we can have agentic technology involved to automate those processes and, and to take away that, that vulnerability means that we can get those critical insights in literally milliseconds. And that is a phenomenal change in terms of how we surface hmm. the intelligence and, and bring it to the forefront. In the end, it's, it's all about the experience. It's not about what you build, it's about how people experience it. We just did a, st a study with uh, uh, more than uh, uh, 10,000 uh, fans uh, um, from sports, and they are craving for data, not only for golf, for many, many sports. People love data when it makes sense, and obviously when you bring data at the right moment. I mean, they don't need data when they're watching the game, but before the game, in the breaks, after the game, they like to have a lot of data.
Welcome IQ transforms raw golf data into live probabilities and insights, of course, for millions of fans. But Pascal, how do you build pioneering tech like this when the clock is ticking <laughs> towards a fixed tee time? Yes, that's true. There is something like a timeline intimidation, if I may say yeah. so, which to some extent is not really different from what we are used to with clients. I mean, there's always a deadline mm -hmm. somewhere. When we have over 40 broadcast rights holders in, in the world taking what is top five sports and event to a global audience of millions and millions, they're putting their own reputations on the line. That's how critical it is to, to, to not only get the technology working, but with a degree of integrity and an absolute authenticity, that this insight this intelligence is actually reflecting what has taken place within that field of play. We will generate far more many probabilities than we will use, for sure. So that's, that's one aspect, more probabilities. The second thing is more insights on many, many aspects. And also some, uh, I would say, commentaries that would, uh, to some extent, uh, give some uh, more explanation about what's going on that you can't see maybe on TV or on the app but that you can learn through, uh, through uh, this uh, commentary film. The outcome IQ to win this session, powered by Cap Gemini. Unsurprisingly, perhaps with the situation as it is, United States well favoured. What advice would you give to any other professional who has a similar dilemma, if you like? They have to get it right for a certain day. Don't underestimate the human alignment. It's not only about technology. And the second one is, uh, well, in fact, D-Day is uh, two or three weeks before D-Day. You have to be ready before D-Day. So, because there's always last minute things that you need to change, check, or, or do. So it's not only about the deadline, it's deadline minus a few weeks. Just beyond the teams, it's about the strength of collaboration between ourselves and, and key technology partners like Capgemini. You don't get a second chance in this game. You nail it or, or you yeah. fail miserably in front of millions of people <laughs> and, and no one wants that. <laughs>for the moment, as long as we do the right thing, obviously. We're also seeing a mind shift in behaviours. Conventionally, sports fans would have gone to usual conventional, traditional search engines. Now, the research is telling us, in fact, 54% of sports fans looking for that content is going straight to AI tools. We know that 70% of the fans crave data and stats, and especially when it comes to player performance and life conditions. We talk about the data and the information and the tech and how the consumer, the fan, wants that, but also it's the skill that you guys have in the way it's presented on the interface, the colours, the text, the, the graphics. How proud are you of what you've achieved in that respect? But yes, the information's there, the insights are there, but actually it's done in a really spectacularly insightful way. It's all about the user experience in the end. I mean, the best information presented in a way that nobody wants to read it has absolutely no value. So it's not only about the quality of what you provide, it's also about the quality of how you provide it and how you make it available through different channels. So the fact that we could take the possibilities of AI into Outcome IQ and really enhance what we could provide before is a game changer for me in terms of quality of information, quality of probabilities, but also excitement for the fans in terms of using the data that we will provide. 
things. What's the one lesson from the Ryder Cup experience that maybe could apply to any high stakes business transformation when we're particularly looking at the advancement in tech and information and data? Sport is a human adventure. And I think that although we're working on tech, every day is a reminder about the fact that this is a human adventure before all. It's all based about one common goal, teamwork, and extreme complexity, in fact, uh, because there's a lot of challenges everywhere. But that's how you bring excitement and pride. What is it the corporate world can perhaps take from the way that we address technology in sport and sport delivery? We are somewhat blessed in, in my world because we have some of the greatest influences being available through the armchair fan as well as the on-course spectator. And that enables us to have this mindset that I call that venue mindset. Bring in that competency into the corporate world so that they think things differently, things that weren't expected and how they react to them. I think in the corporate world, business relationships are also based on trust. And the fact that we demonstrate that we are able to deliver on time, on quality, is also a testimony for our clients that when we take a commitment, we stand behind it and we make it real.